Hello fun people, I'm Isaac Carlson and today we finally need to talk about Bruno because there is so much to know and share about how his powers worked, why his door was removed from everyone else and what led up to him being driven away from the Madrigals. Today we're exploring the entire heartbreaking backstory of Bruno. And of course, if you'd like to see all of my discussions on Encanto and all of Disney Animation's future films, consider subscribing. Now, Bruno Madrigal was born to loving parents Alma and Pedro and was also a triplet. The first Firstborn of his siblings, according to director Jared Bush, was Julieta, then came Peppa, and finally Bruno was born last, so Bruno was the baby of his family. Unfortunately though, soon after his birth, the tragedies that would plague his life began as their family was forced out of the village he was born in due to violent bad men, and I've made a whole discussion linked below about who they are and what inspired them from the history of Colombia if you'd like to learn more about where they came from. The aggressors were dangerous people who were targeting innocent individuals like the Madrigals, which is why they followed Alma and Pedro's group and inevitably struck down Bruno's father. Before Bruno could talk or crawl or even get a chance to have a memory of his father, Pedro had been taken from him. But out of that loss came a magical encanto for his family to live within. And when he turned five years old, Bruno and his sisters were each given an enchanted room within their casita and a powerful gift to accompany it. For Bruno though, his abilities felt more like a curse. Within his room, Bruno had a tower that was filled with sand, which was based on Colombia's Los Esteraques Mountains. He was forced from a young age to not only be positioned to watch over his family, but with his gift, he was also burdened with the ability to look into the future. You see, Bruno's visions were not something he had full control over. Again, Jared Bush explains that some of his visions can be involuntary, which is probably how he initially discovered his power. The first days, months, and years of figuring out his gift was chaos, and it was said that using his powers were very draining and took considerable effort, especially when he was trying to see something specific. In early versions of Encanto, Bruno was even supposed to pass out or get very weak when he completed a vision of the future. As Bruno grew up, though, Alma started bringing villagers to have their futures foretold. She wanted their Encanto to be a paradise, and every year she wanted to prove that they deserved their miracle. By by using their gifts to serve the town. So Bruno followed his mother's request to use his gifts for the people, and it was around that time that he started to develop his ritual as a crutch to focus, cope, and prepare himself for the often emotionally taxing and physically exhausting job he had to undertake. Over the years that followed, the ritual began to feel like a necessity for him, as his role in the village became more stressful and intense, and he became more superstitious. He just wanted luck to be on his side because he wanted to bring people and his family good fortune. Donned in a ceremonial outfit, Bruno would encircle himself in sand within his vision cave. He'd burn leaves and hold the hands of the person whose future he was looking to see. Bruno's vision would then appear before his eyes as they turned green, and then that vision would be forged onto green glass, and then, like clockwork, you would hope that the person's future wouldn't upset them. If I see something that you don't like, you're gonna be all, Bruno makes bad things happen. Oh, he's creepy and his vision killed my goldfish. You see, Bruno was said to be an introvert who wasn't comfortable around people to begin with, and this social isolation wasn't helped by the fact that his gift was often interpreted as negative by the people who called upon his visions. Without knowing exactly how their lives would progress and with no accountability for how they influenced their own lives, the villagers slowly turned on Bruno as they came to believe that he was seeing their dreams only to create misery and chaos in their lives. It was a nightmare! Really? Luckily though, Bruno was able to meet a random rat or two to give him some company as he often felt forced to be alone as he grew up, which only was exacerbated by his mother who started to join in on the town's anger towards him. Alma's desire to rise to their magical gifts led to extremely high expectations of her children, so seeing how Bruno's visions often led to people fumbling and grappling with prophecies they couldn't understand infuriated her. She wanted peace and stability 
stability in their home and in their town, not uncertainty and darkness, which led to her looking down on Bruno. The very woman that forced him to create visions eventually resented the burden she made him bear. Abuela began to only see the worst in Bruno when he was growing up, which drove him away emotionally and physically. You see, when we look back at the triplets going through their ceremony to get their doors, Bruno's door is not in the same place as it was at the beginning of Encanto's events. When Alma's children are adults, Pepa's gold door and Julieta's blue teal door surround Abuela's red door on one wall, while Bruno's green door is around the corner from Julieta's, with a staircase leading to it. But in the flashback, Bruno's door appears to be between his sister's doors. Abuela's red door is nowhere to be found, and that's supported again when we look at the images depicting Alma with all of her gifted descendants. Bruno is between his sisters with his green door, and there is no staircase to be seen. At some point, Bruno's door moved. And I think that happened slowly over time. I mean, we know that doors can suddenly come in and out of existence and that everyone's magical rooms are formed around them and can be even larger than any physical space in Casita could allow them to be. So the space can be created anywhere. Plus, we also know that Casita is able to construct stairs when a moment calls for it. So I think as Bruno became an outcast within his own family, his door faded away to a new location to isolate him further from the rest of the magic gals. He was pushed to the side because of his family not understanding him and his gift, and the larger the distance he felt emotionally from them, the staircase continued to grow and the placement of his door went farther and farther away. I kind of think that Pepa's wedding was probably a turning point for Bruno's relationship with his sisters. He arrived on his sister's big day just trying to be there for her and to show her he loved her, and she interpreted the action as a way to get into her head. At that point in time, he just seemed like a weird monster to everyone, no matter what he did. No one, not even his sisters, believed he cared about the family. As Bruno's nieces and nephews were born, he remained alone for the most part, although he did give both Isabella and Dolores visions of their future. But when Mirabel failed to receive a gift when she came of age, that was when Abuela begged for his son to look into the future to see what might happen to their family's miracle. After over 30 years of slowly condemning him and his gift, when she became desperate, Bruno was the only person she knew she could go to. What he saw, though, disturbed him deeply. He witnessed the magic in danger and Casita breaking, with Mirabelle at the center of it all. But unlike visions from the past, the future felt uncertain. At the time, he believed Mirabelle would either destroy or save their home, but in reality, she would one day break their family so that they could be rebuilt. But I knew how it was gonna look. I knew what everyone would think because I'm Bruno and everyone always assumes the worst. Bruno knew that Mirabel would shape his family's fate, but the Madrigal's lack of faith in him brought him to realize that if he told his mother the truth about what he saw, the family could turn on little Mirabel. So in an act of defiance and in hopes of keeping her safe, Bruno destroyed his vision and left his tower and family behind. He was no longer distant from his family. His place in the Madrigal gals was gone, and he also gave up using his abilities and his family's magic, which all culminated in Casita's connection to the room being broken and his door's light fading away. With his love for his family still present, though, and with the knowledge that it would be practically impossible for him to return to the Encanto if he ventured over the mountains, he instead went past the nursery, moved a large painting near Dolores' room, and broke into the walls. It's kind of funny he chose to do that near Dolores, since she must have heard him going into the walls that night, but I guess she was going to have to hear him for years without anyone really caring or noticing. I associate him with the sound of falling sand. All alone with the burden of the future weighing on him, he built out a home for himself next to the kitchen, where he accumulated food, furniture, and a sizable collection of friendly rats to keep him company while his original room fell into ruin. In his absence, sand would flood his home, the pathways would begin to collapse, and his chambers were ready to be destroyed whenever someone would enter them again. Long before Mirabel noticed that their family's casita was breaking down, Bruno and his rat pals saw it happening all around them. Of course, the rats were comforting and kept the time on his own interesting, but of course, 
Bruno longed to reunite with his family. But while he wanted to be with them and to be included again, at the time, all he could do was watch from afar. Yeah, my, my gift wasn't helping the family, but, uh, but I love my family, you know? Sure, when the casita began to crack, Bruno did everything he could from inside the walls to keep their family's home together. He tried his best to remain brave and make the best spackle he could, but for the most part, Bruno had to be patient for those 10 long years as he waited in the shadows for Mirabelle, the girl he saved, to decide their family's fate. Fun people, something I've been thinking about a lot now that we have seen Mirabelle bringing forth a second miracle is how I would approach an expansion to Encanto's story in the future. And personally, I think I would want a series on Disney+. Plus. We could get so many more wonderful songs. We would have so much time to learn about all of the members of the Madrigal family in the past and in the present, including Bruno. And we would get to see how the family's roles would change now that they have been brought together again. But what do you think? Would you rather see an Encanto 2 or an Encanto series? Let me know in the comments. Of course, if you're new here, consider subscribing. Thanks for watching and have a magical day.